An earth ship is it's a type of house that is completely off grid. Uh, it acts more like a living organism than an actual structure. So it harvests rainwater, it um, grows its own food, it provides its own heat and, and um, coolness for the inhabitants, and it kind of lives with the earth, you know, harvesting the sun and the rain. Um, it's made out of recycled products like uh, car tires, uh, bottles, cans, um, old broken tiles, reclaimed wood, reclaimed insulation, uh, stuff that most people would call garbage. And uh, what's neat about Earthships is they can be built anywhere on the planet uh, because basically wherever humans are, there are old tires and old bottles and old cans. So um, there are these building materials that are that are present and it's, it's pretty low tech, so um, anyone can learn how to build these structures. Ours is called the Global Model Earthship and it's it's probably the most commonly built style, but um, you know we have some bottle work and some some elements that are a little bit different, some artistic features that make it different um, than others. Uh, we had to ad adapt ours for our um, our snow load a little bit, um, you know, because if you get a foot or two of snow um, on our roof, it's a little bit different than out in New Mexico because they just don't have that. Um, so we had to tweak a couple of the structural elements uh, to account for that. Um, and obviously more solar panels. Um, we have we have quite a few solar panels on ours because we're again in New York State, which gets a lot less sun than in New Mexico. Originally, I, I was really fixated on straw bale houses, which are I don't want to say they're common around here, but they they're a fairly common alternative building style. But I just kind of stumbled across Earthships on the internet, and I was really interested. And I guess I was really interested because they're not very common in the Northeast. So I kind of look at it as, as like a big experiment, uh, you know, what works, what doesn't work. Um, I kind of look at our four acre plot here as like just a, a giant experiment as we, you know, head towards the future, um, an unknown future of climate change and who knows what else. So I think it's um, important to do these kinds of things in climates that haven't really been navigated yet, and um, and so others can learn from it. Uh, students can learn. One of the big barriers is uh, well, number one, it's a lot of work. Uh, it's it's very labor intensive. Um, but the other thing is we we have fairly antiquated building codes. Like uh, you know, you you propose something like this, and the local municipalities are like, well, this is too experimental. Uh, you know, Earthship. Builders have to usually they run into a lot of red tape, or um, um, but you know there's an education piece. You know, um, yeah, codes have to be rewritten and, and um, updated. But you know, if you just educate, uh, you know, the local government and health departments about what you're trying to do, um, you know, they they can be common and they would be common if if we got rid of some of those barriers. I mean, who wouldn't want? I mean, nobody likes paying a two thousand dollar heating bill in the winter here um, nobody likes to you know you know pay for electricity you know hundred dollars a month for electricity um, so if you empower people to be able to design structures that eliminate that stuff I think I think you're gonna a lot of people would want to jump on board